Yeah. When you mess with my overlay stuff, I like to use the composite panel. The beat starts ramping up, so I'm going ham at this point. Adjusting clips are your best friend. We're editors. If we're not practicing and experimenting, what are we doing? What's going on, guys? In this video, we're going to be breaking down different effects and texture packs that I use in this music video. I posted a YouTube short of this video showing my timeline, and somebody asked for a breakdown. The artist wanted some social media clips, so I shot that with him. But I wanted to try to see if I could make a music video out of those two social media clips that I shot and some stuff he had shot for the video. It didn't really work out that well and we're not able to use this as the official video, but I did discover some cool effects, try some new things, and I liked some of the stuff I came up with. A lot of the elements come from Tropicolor. There's also some transitions from a pack I got from YC Imaging. I did a more square aspect ratio four by three because all this content was shot vertically. So instead of trying to fill a 16 by nine screen with nine by 16 footage, I figured it might be easier to try to fill a four by three screen uh, or aspect ratio with the nine by 16 footage. So. That's really why I did it. But when you mess with overlay stuff, I like to use the composite panel because instead of just doing like opacity down, which you can do, but you kind of lose a lot of the detail and you know what's there for the video, you can go through and shoot, select different uh, options. So yeah, you know, multiply, overlay, pin light. And you just see what the effect looks like and what it's doing to your video. Uh, I did the same thing with the subtle scratches. If you look, you can kind of see like here in the corner and you'll see this all over the video like scratches and dust will like pop up on the screen but you're gonna when you use this you're gonna have to either put your opacity on or use one of the overlay settings because it's a black screen that has this dust effect happening so you can't see the the layer underneath so you could do opacity but I didn't want to do that because you lose now I see the screen now but now you're, you're not you don't really see the scratches so to keep the scratches then know that detail there and be able to see what you what you got underneath you can just basically do um you can basically just pick one of the one of these options and each one so like it'll affect it in some kind of different way so you gotta like choose what you want and that's why for me in this situation screen worked out this is as you can see the 9 by 16 frame it's a still shot, there's no movement on it. I added all that in post, cropped it on the image. I used some of the transition packs from YC Imaging. Did some stuff to the text, turned it vertically, added some camera shake to it, I believe. Doubled it, you know, just doing some different things to try stuff. The music breaks, so I was trying to emphasize the word pride that comes in. Beat drops again, you see the camera motion there. This is what it looks like without the effect. That's like some scan lines that are there. So that's actually built into DaVinci Resolve. You go to over to here to open effects, type in scan, drop it in. You can play with the bars and move them around, how, how sharp it is, the frequency, the angle, the shift. You can mess with all that stuff. This is one clip right here that I, that I basically doubled uh, and flipped it to create this mirror effect. As you can see, that clip is gone there and that's one there. So the same uh, video clip, I just stacked it and flipped one and you can just do that by coming over to transform and you can see where here where it says flip you can take it off and that's how it was originally and this is how it is once i did that and i just had an adjustment clip on top to do the zoom effect on both without having to program that because that would have been annoying but this adjustment clip has it take it off this is what the image looks like and if i take this like if i take one of these off this is what it looks like. That's all this video is. It's an example of trying things out, see what, what helps. I use it as a transition. It, ran, it starts here, comes in, and it carries us right into the next clip. And you see that it's still some here in the carryover. One, two, three, four, boom. Now we're in this one. Do it again. I wanted to cover up the punch in and decided to grab another overlay from Tropicolor. Another or the, another one of the black and white transitions to, co to go into that. It actually kind of helps because like from color to black and white. Same thing here. You can see the, you can see it bouncing like that. That's not how it was originally. I added camera shake and I just put it to that adjustment clip. So I added that to everything. And then here I just wanted to punch in, you know, just to accentuate that motion. Then do the little 
effect with the hand there just follow the hand going it's very simple things it's just you punch in you find what you want to do accentuate it and i was like oh he does a little hand walk that might be a cool thing to focus on and i just follow the hand over like that so it's it's cool i like doing that kind of stuff it's fun i keyframed it if you were wondering how i did it i just keyframed the motion dynamic zoom man it's clutch you guys should use it if you're not using it dynamic zoom is really clutch you can keyframe it but if you'd like to watch my other video you can kind of see the reason why you would want to use a dynamic zoom versus just keyframing it yourself and it feels really real it feels organic that's what i like about the dynamic zoom if i did davinci resolve did a good job with that and adjusting clips are your best friend camera motion here because if i wanted to kill it i can just boom and it's gone i don't have to go into the clip into the effect and I love, I love this part the beat starts ramping up so i'm going i'm going ham at this point just like he's going i'm cutting so there's a bunch of like me cutting these clips in different uh different uh framings i'm going tight on some popping out i'm just kind of doing it randomly at, at, on the beat in some case i think i am doing it on the beat to be honest with you uh and then like i'm choosing different it's the same it's, it's different parts of the film burn like the film burn that he has in, that travel color has in there but i'm doing different overlays like this one's pin light this one is lu the luma luminosity this one is add this one is hard mix this one is hard light so if this video should show you anything go in and experiment you know that you have things that do certain things like i know that i've messed around with compositing before I haven't necessarily used compositing in this way before, but I know what the, what the composite tool can do. So you just play with it, experiment. We're editors. If we're not out here playing around and, you know, practicing and experimenting, what are we doing? So you can't just assume that you're going to learn one trick and know how to do everything. You have to learn a trick and then apply it to different situations. Try it out, mix it up, you know, have fun, enjoy it. I'm not necessarily waiting till I get paid to edit. You know, this was a, uh, he didn't pay me to do this video we shot a social media clip and i decided to try to make a video music video out of it if possible i said hey let's see if it works if it doesn't work it's cool i was able to create something out of this and came up with some cool stuff i didn't take that out the box and just put it on like because i didn't say like oh this is what it looks like so i'm just going to go with the regular normal normal look and now let me pull the opacity down and then just do that which would have been fine but I wanted to really like mess around with it. I love that. Like, that looks like some mixed media type art stuff going on there. So that's another thing that's cool is you see here it's underneath the clip. I'm, I'm rolling on the vertical and then I put it on top of it. This is subtle stuff. It's the same stuff you were just seeing behind it and I just threw it on top. If you found this video useful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for even more DaVinci Resolve related content like this. Until next time, peace.